Hey guys, this is Abhishek from Gadgetsuits.com and today we are going to do the quick review of a new phone which is coming from Infocus and this is going to be the big brother of the Infocus M350 and 530. This is a premium one in terms of the build quality and also in terms of the hardware. We have got very good hardware inside which is Snapdragon 801 and we have very good build quality and premium looks as well. Let's take a closer look over the phone. So as you can see, this is how the Infocus M810 look like. The phone looks good in terms of the overall build quality and the overall premiumness is also there because of the material which has been used. They have used metal on the edges which does give this phone very good look and again in terms of the finishing it is nice. It is very good to hold in one hand. The back side of the phone has glass at the back which is again having a texture over there so as you can see the phone looks very good in terms of the overall look and feel and the build quality and material which have been used are also premium they have used metal on the edges which does give this phone very good build quality and glass at the back which does give this one very good looks i would say in terms of the overall form factor this phone is not a heavy phone and it feels very solid in hand and feels quite premium as well in terms of looks. Talking about the rear connectivity, we have 13 megapixel autofocus camera which can record high definition video. We have dual LED flash in focus branding over there. We do have support for NFC as well. Over there at the back side, we do have support for LTE. That means 4G is supported on this one. And this is a dual SIM phone with a hybrid tray. You have SIM card slot over there and SIM card slot over there and the SIM card slot which is there on this side can also be used to accept a micro SD card inside. So you can either use a micro SD card into this tray or you can actually use a nano SIM inside and I would like to show you both of these trays before I proceed further. First of all the first tray can take a micro SIM inside and the second tray over there can either take a micro SD card inside or you can insert a nano sim into this tray which is definitely a good thing so you can use two sim card on this one or use one sim card with micro sd memory card as far as display is concerned the display is pretty good in terms of color protection and viewing angles are also very nice it is an ips lcd display which gives you great viewing angles talking about the edges we can see that we have the power and sleep key over there which is slightly on the top area and we have the volume locker which is finished very nice in terms of the overall finishing and the look and feel and you can actually press this button and you will get a good amount of feedback on the top you have a microphone over there which is the secondary microphone for noise cancellation on the front we have a 5 megapixel camera over there and we also have nice metallic earpiece below the glass talking about the front bottom we have touch to pass buttons which do have backlit led and the loudspeaker on this device is also on the front which will give you very good quality of sound and we have tested the sound quality sound quality is pretty loud and clear from this device as far as loudspeaker is concerned at the bottom we have the 3.5 mm audio jack a primary microphone for voice calling and we have a micro usb port for data syncing and charging again the overall build quality finishing and the connectivity on the phone is pretty good let's take a closer look over the software of the phone we have already talked about the hardware and the build quality and it looks like that we have android lollipop running on this device i would like to first of all show you the settings and the version of android over there so we have android 5.0.2 which is definitely a good thing so we have lollipop running on this device when it comes to the storage i would like to show you the storage scenario as well and over here we have storage we have 16 gb of internal storage on this phone and the system is taking approximately 4.76 gb and 8.29 gb is available to the user again we have installed a couple of applications over there which is 2.89 gb you will get approximately 11 gb available on this device as far as free storage is concerned let me just take a look over the ram as well we will take a look over the application scenario which is mentioned over there and we will find out the current status of the ram and we have 2 gb of ram on this device out of which approximately 852 mb of ram is available but on the first boot you will get 1.1 gb of ram this much of ram is there which is less because we have installed certain applications and game and we have done the benchmarking of this device as well but still with this much amount of ram the phone is responsive and smooth in terms of overall ui operations 
here we have the messaging application and on the messaging application front it is kind of a stock android messaging application with a qwerty keyboard which looks a lot like which we see on lollipop devices and over here as you can see you do have support for swipe to type the keyboard keys are pretty big in size you can easily type on this device you also get a pop-up whenever you tap on any of the keys Typing on this 5.5 inch display is not at all a bad experience, it is pretty good. You can easily type on this device much faster in the portrait mode and in case you face any issues, you can always type in the landscape mode as well. Taking a look over the display option, I would like to show you certain settings which tells you the quality of display this device has. We have automatic brightness supported which is a good thing. Apart from this you also have blue light filter which again will help you to have better reading experience in case you are reading textbooks on this device or any other ebook for instance. Apart from this we have other options like LED notification light which you can control you can disable and enable this and you also have LED inactivity feature as per which whenever the phone is idle for one hour the LED does not flash if there are no notification apart from this you also have color temperature which you can control and you do have support for changing the screen mode from standard to dynamic or from dynamic to standard on connectivity front we do have support for tethering as well you can create a portable wi-fi hotspot you have support for bluetooth tethering and usb tethering is also supported let's take a look over the hardware configuration of this one we have corner standard over there which tells us the device model number which is in focus m810 and we have armv 7 processor on this device which is a quad core cpu which is msm8974 pro ac snapdragon 801 talking about display we have full high definition display on this device which is definitely a good thing when it comes to gpu we do have adreno 330 gpu which quadrant standard is not able to detect but we will show you in other application we have these sensors on this device which includes accelerometer sensor magnetic field sensor gyroscope sensor you have linear acceleration rotation vector you have step detector and step counter sensor as well and all of the sensors which you need on a high-end smartphone are there it, and it also has pedometer sensor as well let's take a look over the graphic information and for that we can launch quad Antutu benchmark and here we have the information about the GPU we have Adreno 330 GPU on this device which is very good in terms of gaming and it can handle almost all the high definition games which are available in the market now here we have the camera interface as you can see it has an autofocus camera which has already focused over my iPhone 6 right now let me just take this photo and it has taken the photo pretty quickly let me take a photo from the front camera as well So we have taken both of these photos i would like to show you both of these photos one by one so this is the front camera photo which we have taken from the 5 megapixel camera it has taken my selfie pretty clearly i would say it is pretty good in terms of the clarity in terms of details and in terms of colors as well i can see good color reproduction over there in the selfie taking a look over the rear camera photo this is how it looks like the photo is very crisp and clear you can see the minor details which have been captured very nicely color production is also good and i can see my iphone pretty clearly so this camera at the back is going to give you very good photos in low light and in daylight you will get great photos and the front camera is also very nice so i'm pretty happy with the kind of camera performance this device is giving so we have option over there to control the shutter you can either control the shutter with a touch with a smile or with a wink and you also have different kind of scenes modes which are supported you can control over the white balance as well and if we take a look over the modes you do have normal mode beauty shot mode you also have bus shot mode blink detection is also there HDR mode is also supported and you also have the option of watermarking then a photo when you're capturing it you have motion photo mode you have a lot of modes including panorama mode is also supported and you do have low light mode in which you get better photos with clarity on n2 benchmark we have got a very good score of 40981 although it is an unverified score but i can show you the ranking over there on the basis of this one so it is below samsung galaxy s5 and above xiaomi mi 3 in terms of the ranking and in terms of day-to-day -day usage and performance this device does not give you any kind of issues which is a very good thing and most important because benchmark figures not always give you the right picture but as per the usage i have done 
I have not found any issues as far as performance is concerned on this phone. On Nina Benchmark, we have got a score of 59.5 FPS, which is one of the best score. And this device can handle high definition gaming pretty effectively. There is no problem with this device handling any high definition game, including Modern Combat 5, Asphalt 8 as well. I would like to show you the performance of Asphalt 8 now. Now here we have Asphalt 8 running, which is running pretty smoothly. I would say in terms of graphics, there is no problem. Viewing angles are also good and there is no graphic lag which I can notice. Touch screen is also pretty responsive and the loudspeaker is also loud enough. I, I would say the loudspeaker is loud but not very loud as far as this game is concerned. So you can play this game pretty smoothly on this device without any kind of lag. To show you the video clarity we have a high definition video which is right now running from our channel. And as you can see it is getting played at 720p. This device can also play 1080p videos as well. And as you can see, the loudspeaker is there at the front. There is only one loudspeaker which is there at the bottom. The loudspeaker design is actually a good thing because if you place the device like this on a table while watching a video, the sound is not going to be blocked, which is good. The overall loudness of the sound is good, but not great. It could have been slightly more louder, I would say. Viewing angles of the display are also very nice. You can see the display from almost all the angles without any issues. Display clarity is good. So the overall gaming experience and the video playback experience is pretty good on this phone. This is all we have as far as the full review of the InFocus 810 is concerned. We really like this phone in terms of the overall hardware this phone has, the kind of build quality and material they have used. The phone also look very good in terms of the overall look and feel. It looks quite premium in terms of looks. One thing which I have noticed is that there is slight amount of heating which happens over there when you play high definition games for long and if you play them for a longer time for approximately half an hour or more then you will experience good amount of heating on this phone which can be an issue for some people out there in terms of battery backup it can give you around one day of battery backup easily so that's all from us in case you have any questions you can leave your questions in the comment section below you can like this video this video help you by clicking the like button below you can subscribe to our youtube video channel for more videos like this by clicking the subscribe button below thanks for watching this video this is abhishek signing off Thank you.